Now I'm going to start the presentation, that's enough about Goodwin. Today we're going to talk a little bit about wood in general. We're going to go through the rich history of our nation's forests, do some grades and comparisons so you know how to specify the grade you want, talk a little about wood science and when you need to specify installation techniques, a little about finishes and end up with some case studies so you can see how easy it is to avoid some problems. This course is two credits. After this hour, I will email you a number of handouts, including a wonderful paper by the Portland Cement Association on measuring moisture in concrete, the Wood Floor Association's Problems, Causes, and Cures, and many articles that we've found useful in specification. Um, I will also send you a short quiz and your certificate Goodwin does register the AIA credits and we will give the IDCEC people an event number for registration. So before we get started, what I want to do is show you a few beautiful floors and emphasize some of the most important tips I'll be making today. A condominium like this one with wide wood on the floor may or may not be occupied the entire year. Humidity can build up and get between the boards and create some cupping for uh, when the folks arrive back in the fall again. So a very low cost option to prevent problems is to use some inexpensive polyurethane on the back side of the floor before you install. Polyurethane will not encapsulate the wood, but it will slow down the wood's ability to take on and give off moisture, and in this case, balance the ability on both sides of the wood. And another tip in a wide room and with wide flooring like this, you want to start your installation in the middle of the room. We actually put this tip in our master specification when we work with you on wide wood or wide floors. And then you'll glue a piece of spline in and nail toward both walls. Because the wood is held down on the tongue side with fasteners, most of the shrink swell happens on the groove side. So you're actually cutting your shrink swell in half. Uh, here's a wonderful floor that the Hunt Lodge owner wanted a 14-foot medallion. So we used engineered wood because it shrinks and swells five times less than solid wood to make these large fish that you see in the medallion and 12-inch in-grain pine tiles. Um, also, the engineered matched up much better in height with the tile. Now, the tip in this installation is to always seal the concrete. A well-made engineered floor with the water-resistant backer, if you do get storms or leaks and get the water off relatively quickly, your floor will likely be quite fine. But it may not be able to dry out if the concrete gets wet, so use a sealer on the concrete with engineered wood. Um, here's a beautiful floor that the installer called up one afternoon on a Tuesday and asked if we had anything about four feet wide that he could put into this beautiful foyer. So he left Goodwin about 10 at night after using our big sander to get the log rounds dimensionally correct. And we realized that he had to have the photo in by the following Monday and actually won the Wood Floor of the Year contest. But he had to use denatured alcohol to replace some of the water in the wood cells and then solvents and heat treatment before he could seal these large log rounds. He also used a moisture meter. That's the most important tip here, to make sure that the wood is at the moisture content that you expect it to be over the average of the building. Um, and you have to use a pin-type moisture meter with reclaimed wood because it's measuring electrical resistance. The meters that just sit on top of the wood are measuring specific gravity. And with the really dense reclaimed wood, that, that often won't work. So what you have to do is orient the pins with the grain of the wood because that's how these meters are calibrated. Get it into the wood and measure the moisture content. And he knew that this wood needed to be at about eight or nine percent. So it went in well for the long term. I'm gonna show you how to figure out what you expect the moisture content to be of the wood floor. And this last tip is a very wide cherry floor, about seven inches. So the tip here is to use enough fasteners. With a five inch floor, you want to nail every four inches. With a three inch floor, every six inches, 
seven inch floor you want to nail every three inches like this floor and with a nine inch floor you'd want to nail every two inches but no closer than an inch and a half from the end to avoid splits. Very important tip, enough fasteners. People just aren't used to dense reclaimed wood that's wide and long. Fasteners are inexpensive. That you will find in our manufacturer's guidelines. And another tip here, we actually used plywood over the concrete in this condominium because it was less costly than using levelers on a badly out of level concrete floor. So we used a six foot level and we made sure that the floor was no more than a quarter inch out over 10 feet and an eighth inch out over six feet. And we could use felt to raise up the low spots and a grinder to grind off the high spots on the plywood and make sure the floor went in well for the long term.